Okay. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Trend Talk 2018. I want to thank High Point Market for organizing this event in partnership with the STEAM Media and the Design Bloggers Conference. So let's get started here. Um, first, I want to show you our team from, oh, that's me. Okay. Hi, everybody. That's me. So I'm calling from Peekskill, New York. Uh, I'm just north of Manhattan, and that's where my studio is. So this is the team of uh, Design Bloggers Tour Fall 2017 at High Point. And most of these bloggers I only knew virtually on social media. So it was a real thrill to meet them in real life and get to know everybody in three dimensions. Um, we really had an exceptional tour um, in all different showrooms. But we also had an amazing camaraderie that I think was really special. And I can't wait for you to meet them all. Um, but first, I want to introduce a very exceptional woman that keeps High Point Market uh, in the limelight, Director of Marketing and Communications, Ashley Grigg. Welcome, Ashley, and thank you. Thank you, Jana. I'm very excited to be here, and thank you to all who's joining us today. I'm calling in from a snowy High Point, North Carolina, but I promise that'll all be gone when you get here in April. And um, quick shout out to all of our design blogger tour participants who are here with us today. We're very excited that you've taken the time to share what you found at Fall Market, and we're certainly looking forward to um, to all the eye candy and insight that you're going to share. So thank you for that. Uh, two quick notes on my end before I pass it back to Jaina. Um, of course, as we look to spring, we have a spring market coming up. Oh, I switched the blog. The, the, let me flip back. The Design Bloggers Tour, um, we do have the submission form open right now. So if you all are interested, if you are actively blogging in the design world and want to con to put your name in the hat to be a part of the team, then please visit us at highpointmarket.org. And under Products and Trends, you'll see a link to the Design Bloggers Tour page. We are accepting submissions for this uh, spring tour until January 25th. So go ahead and fill that out. and then. Um, us and uh, STEAM Media and the Select Committee will meet and we'll pick the new team and we will be announcing that live at the Design Bloggers Conference in early March. And then next slide please, Jaina. And then of course we look ahead to April Market which is coming up April 14th through the 18th. So if you're planning to join us here in High Point for uh, the world's most important and largest home furnishing street show in the world, We'd certainly love to have you, and registration is now open. If you are a design blogger, then we'd love to get you set up with a press pass. If you are a designer or retailer, then, of course, we can get you a buyer pass. And if you're a designer who also blogs, then we can get you a press pass and a buyer pass. But you can do all that on our website at highpointmarket.org, and we certainly look forward to having you here in High Point in just a few short months. Thanks. Thank you, Ashley. Now, um, mm -hmm. next, next on the docket, we have to meet the amazing Adam Japko. Welcome, Adam. Um, he joins us uh, from Esteem Media and the Design Bloggers Conference. So, hello. Hey, how are you? Thank you, Jana. Thanks, Hi. Ashley. Um, and thanks, everybody, for showing up today. Um, so, uh, some of you don't, don't know who I am, and uh, I founded a company called Esteem Media. And uh, one of the uh, centerpiece products of Esteem Media is the Design Bloggers Conference, where um, the next one is in early March in 2018, so just a month and a half or so away. And um, one of the most amazing things that uh, we get to do every year is watch the development of the influencer uh, marketing um, programs that are going on in the interior design industry and the luxury home furnishings industry. And um, the last year across all industries, 2017 is getting to be known as the year that influencer marketing really took hold. And it's a very, very cool place for us to be organizing these tours and the folks that you're going to hear from today because we're finally recognizing the connection that niche journalists like the bloggers that were on tour with us and that you're going to hear from today become celebrities in their own right 
and have a need to fulfill amazing their their followers with amazing content feeds on a regular basis. It just so happens also that now as a lot of manufacturers and brands in the design industry are recognizing the value of these amazing niche journalists who are bloggers in their own right, um, are looking for opportunities to connect. And one of the things that you're looking at right now is just a quick comparison that we do every year of the 300 or so design bloggers that show up at the Design Bloggers Conference, what their monthly reach is, and how that compares to the annual, to the monthly um, rate basis of all of the national design traditional media. And it's just a fascinating thing to think that 250 bloggers every month can aggregate an audience that is larger in total than all of the national magazines combined. And if you think about the 25,000 design blogs out there, it's just an amazing phenomenon to me. So we're just really pleased to be in the middle of this. And um, we're, we're happy to organize these with High Point Market. And what you're going to see today is an amazing thing, how 10 people can go on tour, spend exactly the same amount of time standing in the same exact place and look at the same exact showrooms and through their own unique lens can represent it in a way that resonated with them. So today's webinar is going to be a really, really exciting thing. So if you're interested in the Design Bloggers Conference and like to get more involved in this, again, you can just Google Design Bloggers Conference and it's coming up in March. Thank you, Ash. And thank you, Jana. Oh, my pleasure. Adam, that is so remarkable. And I think going through these slides, you're really going to see that it's true. As we went to the same venues and showrooms, we all had our unique lens on. So I think that's fascinating. So starting with that, I'd like to welcome our first panelist. And I've been following Sarah Walker's blog for many years called The Curated House. And she here she joins us from Toronto. And welcome, Sarah. Thanks so much, Jana. It's such a pleasure to reconnect with this amazing group of people and to hear everybody um, and to share all of the delights of what we saw at High Point this past fall. It was really amazing. So let's dive in. Okay. So um, the category I'm sharing here now is um, what I'm calling deconstructed geometry. And I love the modernity of this. I love the real contemporary edge that it brings. And I also love that it's rooted in tradition and in nature and in, you know, fractals of ice and things like that. So the first piece you see on the left is a Kelly Wurstler for visual comfort. And those shards of frosted glass um, really have a dramatic impact. They have a bit of a sonic effect when you walk by. And the scale of the piece is really uh, significant. It's a 36 inch diameter, I believe. So a real anchoring visual statement in the center of a space. And I absolutely love it. Next to it is a table from Daryl Carter. It's called the Fold Table. And he designed this for Milling Road for their collection. And what I love about this is it's 48 inches in diameter. So it's a perfect you know, everyday table for the family, but it's really an elevated everyday kind of a piece. Next to it is um, a bedside table from Century Furniture. And they actually call this uh, collection Cracked Ice. And it's a bedside table, but you can get this piece in a dresser and in many different configurations using their details visualizer. So one of the things I loved about Century was the ultimate customization. They really know and understand designers, and they are keen to let us, let our creativity flow um, using the, the many customizable options, you know, from colors to finishes and um, scales and so on. And then the last um, image on this slide is actually a fabric. It's a textile from the gentleman at Les Ensembliers. They're a Montreal design firm, and they have a collection for Brunswick and Fee. And if we can go to the next slide, it will show us that this was where um, the inspiration started. And if you look at the ceiling, this was a space they designed for Kip Space Show House. And they were looking at traditional deco ceiling treatments to, uh, to use in the space and they wanted to uh, create something more modern. And so they just deconstructed it and came up with this beautiful, more fractal-like pattern. And that was actually the inspiration for the fabric in their collection for Brunswick and Fee. So I just love that. I love the dialogue that happens in the design world and in the, the creative process. And that's just one really great example of that. So we can go to the next slide. 
And I want to talk about how inside our homes, we, we really clearly, we want artisanal, bespoke storytelling statements. And we saw a lot of that on, on that first slide. Um, but now we can have that outside too. And so these are just a, a handful of the untold uh, number of, of fabrics in Sunbrella's collection. And these ones happen to come from Holly Hunt and S. Harris. But really, it, any textile house you can think of, you're going to find Sunbrella fabrics in their collection because they're tried and true. Um, they're bleach safe. They are uh, fade resistant. They're mold resistant. And an incredible way for us to take all of that style and personality that we have inside and move it outside. So we love Sunbrella for that. The next slide is um, something completely different. And now for something completely different, uh, tidy, sexy drink tables. And we just, I feel like we saw these everywhere we went. And as you can see in so many different fashions. So the first one is a Bunny Williams home um, table. And I love it because it's such a juxtaposition of the hardwood and then that drape and it's called the mini skirt. So I love the flirty, you know, sort of quirkiness of that. And then the next piece is by one of my favorites, Bernhardt. And it's their Jack's drink table. And it's, I mean, it's almost reminiscent of a chess piece. I love the black bold marble and the veining. And it's also just a really tidy di diameter. I believe it's a 12 inch diameter table. And as designers, we know we're always looking for those tables that we can fit in everywhere. Because if you're having a party, everyone should have a drink in hand. And so if they're going to have a drink in hand, they need somewhere to set it down. So it. the next piece is, Right. <laughs> so okay. the next piece is from Century and it's called their Artides or Artides. I'm not sure. No, it's not that. Art, Art, Artides. Somebody help me. Martini table. And um, I love that it's it's really almost onomatopoeic, right? It looks like what it is. It looks a bit like a martini glass. This one is tiny. Like you're really only setting down that one martini glass on it. But how perfect because you can move it around the space. So when you're hosting a party, having one or two of these that you can move where your guests are sitting is perfect. And Sarah, then Sarah, Kate, I got to move you along a little bit. So keep okay, going. You got it. Okay. You got it. So another beautiful marble piece from Bernhardt. And then lastly, the, uh, the pink and brass table that you see there is from Highland House. And again, highly customizable. So we can have this done in any color. There's multiple finishes available. And I just love the, the modern edge that it has, but it also kind of has a throwback glam vibe to it. So yeah, so those are my, those are my picks for, for those pieces. It. And then the, the last thing I want to talk about is just how technology is changing our industry. And you see that in Krypton Fabrics. This is my little personal at-home test of um, does it really live up to, you know, to all the hype. And as you can see, it really does. I mean, I took soy sauce and ketchup and crayons and even a highlighter that you can't really see in the photo. And it all came clean. And so in terms of options of how we want to live, um, Having a white sofa is no longer a taboo for people with children and pets. Um, and, and if life happens, which it does, you can always clean it up. I'm a huge, huge fan of Krypton and thrilled to have them in my resources so that I know I can offer my clients way more luxury and way more lifestyle. Excellent. Sarah, thank you so much for sharing those. I just love all your your resources that you're sharing and people make sure to check out her blog for more information thank you sarah now i want to introduce to our sage stage so to speak and sage welcome and we're going to toss the design baton to you from canada to los angeles hey guys thanks to everyone who's joining us today i have to say how fun it is to be reliving all the great antics and style that we enjoyed at High Point in October. And I'm really excited to share one of my favorite trends today. So without further ado, let's head to our first slide. Um, all right. I saw Lucite everywhere. Lucite and acrylic and clear floating pieces. And this is something that is, you know, it's familiar to us in styles like Hollywood Regency and it's always had a very glam reputation and what I loved about all of these latest iterations is how yes it still can can skew very glam but it also feels so much more versatile as well so this table 
table here is from the Theater Alexander showroom. And I'm really, really a fan of um, kind of this blocky construction in the legs and the frame. And then we get that mixed materials effect with that really beautiful, lovely, chunky marble top. So again, um, this would look just as lovely in a very modern contemporary space as it would in something that has that more um, traditional glam uh, sensibility that we often see with Lou's side. So moving on. This, I, I think, was one of my favorite pieces I saw at High Point, not just in this trend category, but overall. This is the Bernhardt showroom, and as far as I'm concerned, Bernhardt can do no wrong. Um, the thing, there's so much to love about this beautiful bachelor's chest. It's practical. You get tons of storage in those two big, wide, deep drawers. That, that really lovely light wood finish. I, I think it's a ceruse oak or walnut, but could be wrong on that one. Um, it, it would slide so nicely into a feminine space, a beachy space, really could, could go anywhere. And then, of course, we have these two clear panels that are functional as legs but um, they they give the piece of floating appearance and I, I also think that something I love about Lucite is I really appreciate furnishings that have personality and a bit of a playfulness to them and the the clear acrylics what they're doing is they're almost uh, creating a trick of the eye with this floating and and that really brings a sense of fun and lightness to whatever space you're using this material in. So moving on. Okay, so this guy here, it's another great example of mixed materials, having the lucite and then having another uh, component to tie in with whatever you're doing in your space. And in this case, it's this gorgeous curved brass edge, which of course is such a complete contrast to to that first coffee table we saw, which was, you know, quite angular. It had the the chilly marble. This would be incredible in a space with lots of, um, you know, the '70s and '80s curvy, sexy furniture that we're seeing a lot of these days. So again, an example of how two coffee tables made with lucite, but totally different applications for for whatever your needs might be. And this is is Highland House. Next slide. Okay, uh, this is the Wexel Art uh, Frame Company, and I'm always really thrilled to see ways that clients and consumers can dabble their toes in a trend without having to spend a lot of money. And what the way these work, it's best to see a video, but really those those little um, silver pins on each frame are actually just magnets. So you can swap the art in and out really, really easily. And again, you're getting this floating effect with the acrylic in the frames. And you can really customize and create your own look while still having this lightness, this um, sense of fun. And it's like a, it's a choose your own adventure for art. Next. Okay, so a few more favorites that I saw. Um, this bed in the top left corner, that's by Mod Shop. And I mean, the, our previous slide, we saw the frames, the Wexel art frames, and that was a way to dabble your toe in the trend. Well, this bed is for pe people who just wanna go all out with lucite and acrylic. It's so cool. Here we see it dressed with uh, boho dressings. It's got that Moroccan wedding blanket on it. So it's a great example of how, you know, with your soft furnishings, um, you can cu customize the look of the lucite. It doesn't just have to be this feminine glam that we normally associate with it. Then we see that Bernhardt uh, chest in there again. The lamp on the bottom left is uh, arteriors. And this is a great example of the, the trend in, in small accessories. You're getting the heft, the weight of a, a chunkier piece because the actual 
you know, dimensions of that clear column, they're quite hefty, but it's balanced out by the clear material. So it's like this best of both worlds. And then I love it with a black shade as they've shown it there. It's so dramatic and high contrast is fantastic. Um, this Anne, I gotta table put you in the center. Bit, oh, sorry, Anne, I gotta push okay, you. I'll speed it up. Okay. Okay, uh, I'll just give credit to these last two pieces. Is it's um, century is that table and you can customize the base with the top which I think is fantastic and then this last one is um, you know I I don't even remember but if anyone wants to know I'll find out thanks guys <laughs> it's gorgeous thanks and so much really really fun great insight there um, a floating I, I learned <laughs> I learned a lot I'm not an interior designer so I'm I'm learning from everybody here so, but this next person is a celebrity interior designer and she has such a distinct point of view. So, Lori, I'm looking forward to hearing what you have to share with us. Welcome, Lori Dennis. Hi, everyone. Thanks for having me. So, you know, the funny thing about trends is you can pretty much throw anything up here and, and if you like it and you're flowing with it, it's a trend. And that's kind of a trend in itself is that everything goes. So. What, I, what I've noticed is that in my business, we're seeing three different groups of clientele and they're running with three different trends right now. The first one are gonna be the millennials, which in number are, are many. And so they're dominating, they're kind of coming into their first homes and, um, and uh, really getting a personality and their own set of values and their own distinctive style. The second is going to be what we'll call middle-aged, which I happen to fall into, and it's funny because I, you know, I'm calling myself middle-aged. That's something the first time I've, I've done that. Um, and you know, this is a group that um, has a lot of money. They're already established. They've been through a couple of trends and a big recession. And then the last group is our older clients, and I'd say that's 70 and older. And those are kind of my parents, and, and I've been influenced the whole uh, way through my life with what they were doing and, and all the trends that they went through. So I'm going to start with this millennial group and the trend that they're really embracing right now is um, spelled completely different. If you've ever been in an Ikea, you might have a little practice with this, but it's, it's spelled differently than it sounds. It's who Huga, and I never feel comfortable saying it, but I feel comfortable in it. This is a reaction. I think of the millennials who have grown up with this very stark, uh, minimalism and modernism in that mid-century they were little kids when that was going on and then we went to you know really clean uh, straight lines and leap stark kind of designs um, so this is an affordable way to do it yourself and create your own space a lot of these Millennials are in cities um, metropolitan areas they have very small spaces and they're, they're really kind of um, returning to what I feel is a very 70s look. They've been inspired a little bit by the jungle and the boho. You got the flora and the fauna, the flora and fauna, a lot of plants, and um, cozy, just cozy blankets and, and cocooning and being with their friends and um, everybody meeting at the house uh, together. They, a lot of them don't have kids yet. They might not be coupled up yet. And so they can still kind of be in that friends moment where they're snuggling up and, um, and doing things that are comfortable and intimate. <clears throat> and this picture, this was actually designed um, for a client of ours and they uh, want, everybody wants that white sofa. So we regularly use high performance fabrics and this one is a Durley fabric. And there's some other eye point vendors in here um, who weren't on the tour. Um, so if anybody would like any more information about any of these different pieces, they can let me know and we can boogie on to the next slide. This is another example of the Huga um, mixed with what's happening with the, the middle age. I, we got to come up with a better, better, a better description of these people, <laughs> the people in the thirties to the, the sixties, um, people with money, let's call them that the money people the spenders, um, where there's some comfort here and we have that trend of cocooning and the blankets and the fuzzy, you know, the fuzzy things, but we also start to embellish. We're tired of, you know, we've seen the mid-century, we've paid for all that stuff, we've lived with it, um, we've had no color in our spaces, and we're returning to 
crown moldings on the ceiling again. We're embracing the mixed metals, the jewels, um, the, the, the golds, the brasses that we're seeing. We're putting um, drapery into spaces that has embroidered um, trims and tassels. And I'm sure Jan is happy to know that that's coming Yay. back in a big way. Mm -hmm. And um, we're, you know, we still like to be comfortable. We're not super formal people um, in, in this group, but it's a mix between the two um, that you can see in this picture where we're, you know, accessorizing and we're embellishing, but we're also still cocooning, being very comfortable and having layers and textures and warmth and intimacy and um, uh, really keeping things pretty warm and simple. All right, we'll move to the next one. Now, the third group of people are um, seniors, and we got to come up with a better word for retired. that. Our, our retired our retired folks, um, and th these are 70 and older. And the interesting thing that I'm seeing with um, this client base is that they've gone through the 70s with all the flora and fauna. They've gone through the 80s with all the Kelly Wurstler looking kind of mauves and pinks um, that the millennials are embracing. And then they went through the um, mid-century where they, I remember, I recall when I was in school and I would come home and learn from all these architects and they said, God, it's so ugly and cold. You know, who could ever love this? And this is when they were all in their Tuscan mansions and their Spanish inspired um, kind of theme was going on then. But I think it slowly grew on them because now all we get from the 70 and over crowd is we want it all white. We want it really simple. We want to get rid of, you know, all the accessories and we want to be very minimal. So, um, oh, I forgot to give some shout outs to the um, people in the last slide. It's all Dura Lee and Sombrella because whenever you see white, it's gonna be high performance fabric from Dura Lee or Sombrella and the rest of the fabrics in um, on the sofa were, uh, were the Dura Lee fabric. So we can go to the next one. Okay, I gotta move you along, Lori, but okay. go ahead. So, so this, uh, this one you're seeing again, they want white, they want it clean, um, Sombrella. We'll go to the next one. So this is um, this is kind of the the middle aged people again the people with money we're going back to highly decorated um, maximalism blue and whites accessories everywhere we have a century table here some umbrella fabric because they all still want that white sofa but you're seeing like every space has something on it it's the complete opposite of minimalism and modernism that we've seen so we're we're just moving back that way again and then the last one we can pop to. And then this would be a prime example of the Hugo Trey um, uh, style that's going on right now, trend that's going on right now, where it's just very comfortable, very inviting, very welcoming, that white sofa, again, umbrella, high performance, indoor, outdoor. So the other thing is you're seeing all the outdoor fabrics come inside so people can really live on them. Um, just snuggling up, getting comfortable. Um, I'm just interested to see what this trend is gonna look like when it gets to be 100 degrees outside. <laughs> Thank you, Lori. I love this idea of comfort. I think that's welcoming to all of us. So thank you for that insight. Um, so now I'm going to introduce um, Cecilia. She is so sorry she couldn't make it. She Her house was hit with the flu, so she is out for the count. So hi, Cecilia, if you're just listening in. We hope you feel better. And if you don't know her blog, Home with Kiki, Cecilia is a home stager and interior designer in Chicago. So you have to check her out. So I'm speaking on her behalf here. So looking from her notes, she says, the theme she wants to present today is brass is back and not going to any way away, is not going away anytime soon. In her home staging business, she says, there is a new generation of homeowners with an appreciation of this glorious metal and finish. She really loved this combination of velvet and brass by Mod Shop. And this was at the salon in Market Square during High Point Market. And she says, some people feel that brass uh, can't be mixed with certain colors because it's so vibrant, but she says, yes, it can. And from bold hues of blue to pink, red, and simplified with lucite, this lacquered tabletop is a great example. And this is from Highland House. And, um, oh, here we go. So for a more neutral palette, uh, where she was showing this piece on the left. This is an upholstered chair from Mod Shop. So the brass can be mixed with white and creams and grays. This gorgeous marble top table is <clears throat> from Century with the brass base, totally modern, but can also go into a more traditional setting as well. 
And this bar cart is from Mod Shop. It's a great example of brass simplified with acrylic or lucite. So that was one of her favorite pieces. Oops, sorry about that. And finally, um, Cecilia notes, for those who can't fully commit to brass in a big way, uh, people can incorporate it in smaller items like Wexel art frame. So you can see the brass bindings on this floating frame. Um, it was Wexel's first high point market and owners Natasha and Morgan were thrilled to share their story of entrepreneurship and product development with us from the tour. Their line was launched really trying to find a flexible framing uh, for kids art and it's a really great story. So that's uh, presenting from Cecilia. We hope you feel better and thank you Cecilia for your slides. So next up is Cheryl Keys Clendenin of In Detail Designs. And welcome, Cheryl. I know you're just back from KDIS and you're joining us from Pensacola, the Gulf Coast of Florida. So we look forward to your slides. Hi, everyone. Thanks for having me back. Let's get going. Voila. Okay, um, I'm uh, I'm sort of like with Lori on the uh, the trends word. You know, I think it's kind of ugh, you know. And uh, the month of January, I get a lot of requests for for interviews and whatnot on you know what's the new trends for 2018 and all that sort of thing. And I always, you know, I'm the first to say, you know, I don't follow the trends, we lead the trends, you know, and and kind of go with that. But I think there's always sort of um, I guess sort of a, a theme uh, that comes out of, of market. And, and what I enjoy going um, and looking for are really the things that are sort of out of the ordinary um, that are a little, you know, maybe on the cusp of, of being kind of interesting and cool, but not yet um, all over the place, you know, uh, such as the, you know, rusty bucket of bolts sort of look that um, I'm seriously over. And, uh, and hopefully market will get over that too. But for me, the um, the best thing that the best some of the best things that came out of market this time was really sort of um, you know my mantra of real people live here, and I think that that is shown by um, uh, the plethora of of performance fabrics that are that are out, and also uh, you know products that actually do um, double duty. Um, in this slide, you're looking at, you know, Bernhardt. Um, it, it also, I will note that, you know, one of my my posts was about the family, um, uh, the family oriented businesses, because we did, we visited so many, and I really, really was struck by that because I'm a family business. And uh, I think that's just really wonderful. I like doing business with the people uh, that I like, and, and uh, was just really amazed by how many, um, how many businesses really are family oriented. I didn't even realize. Um, that's you know, Spurn Hart right down there, and his daughter, and his the, one of the one of the twins right down there in the bottom. I can barely see it. Uh, at any rate, this uh, the you see note the asymmetrical lines on the chairs. These are actually been in the line for a long time. I've used them many times. They're super comfortable. Um, this is shown in a leather, which again, you know, is a is a great uh, fabric for families and pets and that sort of thing. The um, console, I'm dying to get my hands on. Uh, this is just a beautiful interpretation, and Bernhardt just does such a fabulous job with uh, with materials. They are materials people for sure. The next slide is, um, is is younger, which is another family oriented business. Um, I've been doing business with them for a long time. This is showing a Krypton uh, little mini sectional there, and they are uh, they're fabulous and a wonderful price point too. I might add, um, they will uh, they will do your COM fabrics also, which I think is really great. Um, it's not all super modern like a lot of people think. Um, but again, I think this is a very, uh, a real, Meredith's a very real person, you know, and it's it's all going back to that, you know, real people live here and, and kudos to the manufacturers that are really stepping up to the plate and trying to solve these problems. Because for my clientele, I deal with people with, with, pets and and uh, and kids and husbands who like to put their feet on the sofa and you know things like that and and while I love to do uh, some glam uh, you know projects it, it really I have to be on top of, of what's happening with uh, with performance fabrics and keep keep going there the next one um, this is from Tomlinson and <clears throat> this company's Erwin Lambeth and uh, you know I 
enjoyed like crazy beating Barry because he just was fabulous, one of the designers. And what I what I took away from being there was how much Tomlinson will let you customize. Like you really can become your own furniture designer by uh, working with them. And that's how he got into it, he says, is that he kept doing it and he would have this frame and that frame and that frame. And finally, they just asked them to do a collection. And so I think you see again with this dining room chair, uh, sort of something unusual. It's it's sort of with the theme of elevating the ordinary. Um, and I think that uh, that's sort of fun to do is taking something that's every day and giving it a twist to make it really unique and different. And I really enjoyed uh, visiting that showroom because they have a lot of really unique pieces. Can you go ahead, go to the next one. This is from Century again, another Comer Ware who took us around, was delightful person. Uh, these are probably not my two favorite pieces of, uh, of, of Century because they have such a huge line, but I really did uh, like the shape of this ottoman. I thought it was very interesting and fun and love to have a big foyer to put it in. Of course, I would put it in a Krypton fabric probably, uh, but really enjoyed that. I, I'm a big uh, person with, with ottomans. I call them tuffets and um, there are several tuffets in every job that we do uh, and mostly usually cover with a performance fabric. Um, sometimes in a bedroom and a personal boudoir, you know, maybe we get into a velvet or something a little more fun um, like that. But I really enjoyed that uh, that piece. I think it's, again, showing something that's uh, a little different than the ordinary, as, as well as the one on the bottom, too, with the lucite legs. Uh, the lucites, obviously, you know, and acrylic are, are all over the place. We do it in our custom furniture um, as well that we design and um, love the tray application because you can't have a upholstered ottoman without somewhere to put your cocktail. Right. Okay, you can go to the next one, Jan. And then uh, lastly, I'm, I'm talking about cocktail tables. I think this has sort of been a, um, if you look at some design in the last, I don't know, maybe five, three, five years ago, you're just you're seeing a lot of boring in that, uh, in that arena. I think vendors are stepping up to make more unique cocktail tables. And uh, as a designer, I'm really thrilled about that. And across price points too, the one in the upper left is a very simple cocktail table, but very uh, price effective from um, Scott Living. Really, really liked that one on the right. That is also, and by the way, it is a performance fabric, it's Krypton from Universal Furniture in the upper right. I uh, love the shapes on that. Again, you can tell that I'm I'm struck by uh, shapes. I like shapes and, and asymmetrical lines and textures and things like that. Love the nail heads on it. Um, I probably would put a piece of glass on it though, to be honest, um, even if it is a performance fabric. But I really enjoy that one. The one in the middle is from Highland House. I love the colors and um, I think as Sarah had noted that a lot of this, and I'm fairly sure, but I would have to double check that this one could be customized too. Someone else might might remember that. The one in the bottom right is from Mod Shop and I just thought that had a really neat, warm look. It's a little lower, so it'd be great with a younger uh, sofa. Um, it would fit that that size really well. And then the left one is from um, Century. And uh, this was, you can't tell here, but this was a really neat, um, almost looked like a painting. Uh, which again is, is definitely prevalent uh, at market. There was um, at uh, John Richard had several uh, lines that, that weren't available yet, but that had really neat um, artistic uh, interpretations on the doors. I mean, no more is a door, just a plain door like you saw on the first slide. Everything is really uh, it's just elevating the ordinary. People are looking for ways to add art and, and, um, sort of that visual texture in, in all the pieces. And I'm really excited about that because that's something that's, uh, I'm just not much to do like, you know, walnut or, or hickory wood, just a plain old uh, something that's just not our style. So I'm really excited about seeing this. This page really shows you how much uh, variation there is uh, all across of it. But uh, I really enjoyed it. I really had a great time on this. And I thank you, Adam, for allowing me to, uh, to participate. I really enjoyed it and um, hope to see everybody there again. Thanks, Cheryl, so much. Um, so much eye candy here, it's really wonderful. Um, so next up, I want to invite Courtney Allison from French Country Cottage, and um, she's a super alum. She's been on many tours, and how many tours have you been on, Courtney? You know, I have to think about it, but I've been going, um, you know, I was working with the market um, separately before the tour started, and I think I've been on every tour that Design Bloggers has done. Excellent. Well, we look forward to your slide, so let's jump right in. Yeah, thanks for having me. So what I wanted to talk about was just kind of one of the trends that I saw at market, which I it seemed like it was in almost every single showroom around every corner, everywhere we went, it was velvet. I just saw it everywhere. 
and I love velvet. Velvet's, you know, it's a beautiful, beautiful fabric and it adds, you know, a lot of texture and really beautiful, um, I don't know, just a, a different feeling to a piece that's kind of ordinary. It can take it and make it look something, you know, totally different. So what I kind of wanted to talk about in this slide is this is, you know, this is like the softer side. So velvet, it was in like really rich, saturated hues, but it was also in really muted hues. And this is at Bernhardt. And I loved that the um, the pillows, and you can see it on the chair there also, it's that, that really kind of a, you know, a pale blush color, but it just really adds something really special to that room. So I love that. And the next slide. So this is one of my favorites. This is like just shows how just a tiny touch of velvet can really change, you know, the look and the feel. So this is at Shabby Chic. And I love that the color of the throw, the velvet throw is what we're talking about. And the color of that is just really, really kind of rich and elegant and beautiful. And yet it's very feminine. It has the little ruffle on the detail. Um, it's just a really, really beautiful, beautiful piece. And the next one. Okay. This is Theodore Alexander. And this one I feel like is kind of like old Hollywood glam. It's got that, you know, beautiful headboard with the the gold detailing and you know all of that going on in the background and it's again it's a really soft beautiful color it doesn't have to be something really bold you know to make a statement because that headboard makes a statement and then it's repeated of course on the, um, the ottoman at the foot of the bed this one might be one of my second favorites of the velvet i love the dusty blue color mixed with the gold and i know that's another trend we just talked about you know gold was everywhere the brass that beautiful glam look and i love that you can see in the background of this photo that there's a bright chartreuse color and this is you know kind of like the two you know trends right there like bright and bold and beautiful and then really soft and muted and just really kind of you know an elegant feeling this is at mod shop that's right that was gorgeous. And some more from Mod Shop. Yes, this one's also from Mod Shop. And here again, it shows the two different, you know, color variations. We've got the, you know, really rich raspberry kind of a color and then that beautiful blush on the sofa, which I just think was just like amazing. Courtney, thank you so much. I love seeing your particular lens is very different from um, a lot of ours. And you're, I know you come from a photographer's background and you have your... Uh, French vibe. So it's really cool to see what you see at market. Thank you. Thank you. So now um, I'm not sure, but I don't see Deborah Von Donna from DVD Interiors on the line. Um, oh, she's here. Yay! Hip hip hooray! Welcome, Deborah. Now I know Deborah had a photo a photo shoot this morning, so it was going to be yeah. hit or miss. So I'm so thrilled to have you here, and you. um, I you're calling in from Connecticut, and you're one of my favorite bloggers. I love your point of view, and you are prolific. <laughs> and amongst everyone, you really support our industry and other bloggers. So welcome, Deborah. Thank you. Thank you very much. What a wonderful introduction. It's such a pleasure to be here, and um, I've been thinking about themes that, you know, people should be keeping track of for 2018, and I just have to say, when you visit High Point, the abundance of products can make it really hard to define what the best of the new is, but I've had some reflection, and I can clearly say there's a shift in our home marketplace. Um, we see a shift in colors and fabrics. With, for me, the sofa was the main furniture highlight this year. And to that, the welcomed wave of eco-friendly and naturalist materials. And we have this really comfortable elegance approaching the home environment. And I'm excited about it. So I'm just going to talk about five points, which everybody's touched on already. Um, but let's just recap a little bit. So let's talk about color. The overall palette was washed whites, blush, and sandy grays. Um, we saw accents with metals and gold, as Courtney mentioned. It was everywhere. We also saw a mix of ceruced oaks, beige linens for texture, which I love. Um, and then Bernhardt, Bernhardt, you know, had all of that, the beige, the whitewash, but the Holy Trinity for me really was Bernhardt, Century, and Highland House. I could, 
I could go back there again and again and see something new every time. Uh, I, I was just amazed at the plethora of products that they were bringing to market, and I'm very excited to see it. And also, can I just mention, as Cheryl said, these are all family businesses, and like her, I get really excited about that. Um, you know, I see it's kind of a return of, um, you know, what kind of value value system you have, and if you have whatever your system, you have choices here that you can have um, in your home that reflect your values. So, um, oh, and I must say, I found the price points also surprising and affordable for the style and the quality and the upholstery that was being offered. I just, uh, everybody worked really hard to offer a great price point, and it was there. I mean, um, I was surprised by that. So, Can so I let's show your focus. First slide? Pardon? Oh, I've got your first slide, Deborah. Oh, yeah. So, this is good. This is good. This is where I am because I'm going to talk about two words performance fabrics. <laughs> Can you say performance fabrics? Because it was everywhere. We see Dura Lee here in this picture uh, using Krypton, as Sarah mentioned. It just was um, beautiful, beautiful textures, patterns, and the white sofa is going to dominate because we don't have to be afraid anymore of having a pet friendly and children-friendly, family-friendly environment with the sense of luxury. It's, um, as you can see here in this in this space that Jerry presented to us. So I have to say, you know, there's also velvets that are um, performance fabrics and boucles. Touting the ideal performance for every home is really the shift in the market. They're textural, they're soft. And they're family friendly. You used to not be able to say those two things in, you know, one sentence, but we can now. Um, so this is changing the home decorating landscape. And where's this piece from, Deborah? This is pretty. Um... So this one is Mod Shop, which I think we all love. I think we all walked in there and went, "Whoa, I love it here." <laughs> we see the millennial blush pink sofa that uh, you know we've spoken to already, but the white so sofa, I have to say, was the most common piece seen. Um, we have some glam silhouettes and velvets and boucles. So here, some other themes. So I think the themes of weathered woods were calming, the Mediterranean, for me, eco-friendly in nature, or, you know, kind of what I like to work with, with a vintage and handmade global feel. So we see that here in this wicker chair. I just, um, this is a beautiful chair. It has hints of vintage with the round, but you know, the rounded corners. We saw a lot of rounded corners in chairs and sofas and in tables. So um, also in lighting, we see wicker and lighting and accessories. I think we're seeing a lot of wicker. I'm actually using it in an entry right now for a home and it just it just has a really warm feeling using that material. I like it. Um, another favorite at market was for me just being part of the tour. Really, <laughs> I you know I just loved being with a group of like-minded designers. It was really special for me because I believe that you know as humans we crave the ability to connect on a deep personal level with people. And um, that's why we join groups and events. And I think that's also why we're all social mavens, because <laughs> we want to connect with each other. So this was a great experience. And I really appreciate that Esteem Media has put this together and that High Point embraces it, because I think it, um, it encourages us in our business, you know. All right, so I just, I just want to, yeah? Oh, go ahead. I want you to talk about maybe the Ben piece on the right. So yeah, I was just going to talk to that. So I love these were great pieces. Um, again, it's that handcrafted feel, but they also have versatility, like this bench that Brittany's sitting on. This little stool, you could take it off and it became a table. You can use it inside. You can use it outside. This was a great product from California. Um, it had a very California vibe to it, too. So, yes, this is uh, one of our manufacturers, Ben, that was a pleasure to meet. So just to recap a little bit of everything that we were seeing, um, um, I think for me, I think the trends in decor appear to be appear to like mimic luxury hoteling. I think hotels are leading the current residential home market with these earthy textures, relaxed elegance expressed in handmade materials and structure. 
Um, and I think this trend has staying power. I, I really love the organic modern. And it's prevalent here in New York and the scene with restaurants and hotels. Like if I look at the Ace Hotel or the Standard or the W, to name a few, these are all common themes. The Williamsburg Hotel in Brooklyn, if you ever come here, is full of expression and periods and different styles. It's kind of the Vogue Brooklyn feel for me. And yet it's everywhere. It's in San Francisco, L.A., New York. And um, I like it. It's a naturalist feel and it's very chic and it's very comfortable. And I think that's what's really affecting our we're seeing that coming into the home now. So Good. well, I'm sure so I hope you enjoyed seeing... these thoughts. <laughs> oh, loved it. And I'm sure we're going to be seeing more more on that from your blog. I would love to see you travel and um, see more <gasps> Me too. Things. That sounds good. <laughs> Thank you, Deborah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you. So I'm up next, and my name is Jana Platina Phipps. I am called the Trim Queen. I'm an embellishment specialist. Um, I'm a trimming designer, and I really believe that people can be very self-expressed by their use of embellish embellishment. So that was kind of the lens that I brought to the tour, and this was my second tour this fall. What I'd like to talk about is maximalism. So I'm opening with this fabulous room, which was a co collaboration of interior designer Barry Benson in Charlotte with Highland House. And I think this is just an exceptional example of this maximalist um, trend. And it really is, maximalism is a reaction to the post-recession minimalism. So instead of less is more, as I, Iris Apfel says, more is more and less is a bore. So I, I love her. And, um, and this is kind of what is post-recession. So someone who thrives in this environment is surrounded by textiles, furnishings, art, and objet that is reminiscent of their life's journey. It's very textured, like their life. So have you noticed on social media that people are inspired by and so proud of, of where they've been, where they're traveling, and they want to share their pictures? So I think this trend really embraces the desire, that desire, uh, with the mix of patterns and embellishment at play. and. Um, I've even come up with a little term called wanderlux because I think it's a luxury way to show where you have been. So this first slide um, talks about fabrication. And one of the fabrication trends I saw at market and highlighted on my blog called Fabricating Fine Upholstery is the use and con the use of contrast wealth as part of the tendency to layer. So on the left, we have the Cameron chair at Wesley Hall and it incorporates um, a French knot tape and it adds a contrast between the fabric and the frame. And the Peggy chair on the right from Barry Benson for Highland House has a double wealth and I think this gives it a pop of graphic line and color and it really adds to this cool mix of pattern to a more traditional frame. And then these trimmings I spotted from my friends at PR and Co and they're out of Chicago and they did these beautiful embroidered tapes that uh, are made in India. And I think all of these add to that maximalism vibe. So with houses like Gucci and Prada showing looks of fabric collaging and layered trimmings, it's trickling down into home. And feathers and fur are a few elements that really were catapulted back into fashion this last season and going forward. But not everyone wants to live in a symphony of pattern um, like me here on the right, <laughs> where I've mixed uh, in beautifully with the CR Lane chair. Um, their showroom was just packed with pattern and color and um, embellishment. It was wonderful. This is a statement chair. But you can opt for a more subtle addition, like just like a dress. You can wear it on an occasion. So you can add um, a wow factor with a pillow um, or even an occasional like some of the cocktail tables that we've seen. But I love this ostrich feather and suede trimmed pillow from South Africa's Nagala Trading, and that was a new source that I find, and that's N-G-A-L-A. -A. Um, it's kind of like the perfect jewelry piece. And then the Peacock Entertainment Console is just amazing, and that's from Bernhard, and it has a front that is it's embellished. It looks like metal embroidery. It's hand carved in reclaimed teak, and then it's cast 
in um, German silver. It's really gorgeous. So there was definitely international flair from Green Apple Homestyle, and they're based in Portugal. The Gunma leather tray is lined with fur, rabbit fur. It's totally exotic. I mean, I was not expecting to see these materials together, and you can even see that, that touch of brass peeking through. Um, and then you have this table lamp that's faced with fur, and it has a tassel, and it just takes this trend to the max. I love it. Um, and if real fur isn't your thing, of course, there are options. And this is a really cool Quincy chair from Universal Furniture, and it's upholstered in a faux alpaca. It has a great feel. And I really love the clean lines softened with faux shearling at in this contemporary piece by Century. And this is called the Hale Love Sofa, the Hale Love Seat. So I've got to shout out to my fringe friends. You know, there's a fringe cult out there and we are always trim spotting fringe and there was no lack of fringe at market and it's not stopping either. So these are some spectacular pieces that exude personality. The top left is um, shaggy leather chair again from Nagala and they were uh, at Market Square. And then there's this amazing ball chain ottoman called the Hendrix from Marge Carson. Um, with this kind of peacock color velvet. It was gorgeous. Then up to the center now, these are the hot couturiers of market, Nathan Anthony, and they're out of LA, and they debuted their Elan chair, and they had this black leather uh, fringe that like puddled and pooled um, like a train, and that was beautiful. Um, then we have Corey, Dan Corey Damon Jenkins, and that's that beautiful persimmon with this lush, lush, super thick, luxurious brush fringe, and this is really a glam slam at Leathercraft. That was fabulous. And then I've always loved this contemporary lounge chair. I'm, I really want to get this for my listening room. And this is from Lee Industries. And all this fringe is hand cut. And I just love that. So in closing, for my trend, I want to say, as Coco Chanel brilliantly once said, an interior is the natural projection of the soul. And I love this maximalism trend because I really think it gives people license to creatively self-express themselves in their decor. And that is it for my slides. And I'm, this was so much fun. And thank you to all the presenters. I really loved what everyone had to say. And I want to thank High Point Market and thank Esteem Media. And Ashley, how are we doing on time? I think we're pretty good and we have time for a couple questions. Yeah, I think so. Jaina, uh, I see two questions in the chat feature if you want to check that out or I can just okay. read it. Let me read the first one. Um, I see um, it said most everyone has mentioned performance fabrics. So does anybody have any predictions on what's next in the world of performance fabrics? Well, I, I would predict that there's going to be some voice activated functions, like whether it's, um, you know, speaker wires being in the fabrics or whether it's going to be um, lighting of some sort. So that's that's from me, from Jana. Anybody else? I, I think the line is Cheryl. I think, oh, sorry. I, this is Cheryl. I, th I think that they will just get better and better, you know, um, because I've been doing performance fabrics for many, many years when people looked at me like they thought I had grown two heads, uh, suggesting they put outdoor fabric on their sofa. Uh, but I live on the coast and this is a reality of our life. And like I said, you know, my hashtag is real people live here. And so I think what has happened, I've seen it myself in just a few short years grow tremendously in the quality of the fabric. So I think what you're gonna see is just more and more to where I swear to you, I've got an entire resource room, 300, 400 square feet of fabrics, and we really just need more and more um, Krypton and, and Sunbrella and better colors and things like that. And I think that uh, Krypton for sure is on the cutting edge and they are going to be uh, just improving it uh, as we speak, really honestly. I couldn't agree more. This is Sarah. And um, one of the trends that Courtney touched on, actually, in terms of seeing velvet everywhere, um, I think that in terms of performance fabrics, one of the added layers that we're going to see is not only stain resistance, but also crush resistance. So I think we're going to see 
um, a really beautiful hand, you know, that, that gorgeous silk velvet that we all adore, but would never ever dare put on a sofa for fear of somebody actually sitting on it. Um, we're going to see, I think, just the hand of all of the performance fabrics are going to become increasingly, increasingly luxurious so that all of the upholstery taboos that we used to have um, are going to fall by the wayside. And really, the world will be our design oyster. Design oyster. I love that. Um, you know, I think that we could keep going to questions, but I, we did promise we'd keep this to an hour. So, Gina, I think that uh, we should probably sign off. Do you have any closing remarks? Oh, my closing remarks are thank you everyone for attending and hopefully there'll be web more webinars to follow for High Point Market. I think this is really informative and I just want to thank all the presenters, you Ashley, Adam, and um, looking forward to next market already. Yeah, me too. Thank you, Jana. And thank you to you, Jana, thank you. for hosting. You did a wonderful job. Thank you to Adam and Esteem Media. Um, what a great partnership we have here. And certainly thank you to all of our attendees for joining us today. Uh, I hope you certainly got something out of it. And be on the lookout for the um, the 2018, the spring 2018 Design Bloggers Tour team to be announced at the conference in early March, the Design Yay. Bloggers Conference out in Los Angeles. Yay. And then, of course, look for the team and watch them as they go through market in April. Hopefully uh, you'll be there too. And um, we want to follow along, so be sure to use Hashtag HPMKT as you're around and posting, and then we'll certainly see what comes out of the tour on all these wonderful blogs afterwards. So thank you all for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye.